Welcome back to BTG Squad, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, I have two people who I've known for <sighs> probably what? Since before Years. you were Since 20. Two- 20? Since yeah. 20? So I'm 30 now. So it's been probably 12 years, maybe more, that I've known you two. And we have been through some ish, right? Throughout the time that I've known you and you, you both were married when I first met you, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How many kids do you have, yeah. Skis? <laughs> Is this your fault? <laughs> <laughs> this is why we're here. I'm not. I'm not. I am we not. We both have something in common right here. We met this guy and ended up divorced. Hey, I'm not a bad luck charm. No, I got three kids. You've got three kids. Yeah. Better. How many kids do you have, Justin? Zero. Zero How do you kids. feel about that? Um. Well, I have a soon-to-be stepson here in the near future, so I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. I was too immature to have kids. Even when I was married, got married early. Um, my first wife, or only wife, I guess, her uh, family was Catholic, and we were living together and kind of, I guess, rushed the process. Mm. We got along good, but it wasn't like, it never was like anything like real, I guess I would say. It was more of just a friendship. So what's your opinion right now of people getting married young now? Like, it's 2023 now. So a lot of people, and I've actually got a friend of mine who's just, well, I don't know, I can't really tell all their business, but I know some people who are pretty young still, and they're they're having a kid right now, and they're about to get married. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I think for me, there's I've always had a fear of getting married. And it's it's odd because the first thought that comes into my head when any whenever I hear the word marriage, and st- like it's supposed to be this beautiful, wonderful thing, right? And you're supposed to, maybe back in the day it was. It's now the only thought that comes into my head is nothing beautiful. When I hear marriage, my heart starts thumping, <laughs> <laughs> and the word divorce. Not in a good way, though. Yeah. <laughs> no. Your heart flutters. My heart flutters, and the word divorce. You get like anxiety. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do seriously. Well, what do you? The word of? divorce pops into my head. You're right? afraid of the divorce part, so you're afraid of the end, the possibility of. You're afraid of failing. The possibility of failing is yeah. bothering you. Yeah, you're not afraid to get married. You're afraid to have it fail and other people to know you failed at something. One hundred percent. Yeah, and I'm a af- yeah. I'm absolutely afraid of failing at it. <sighs> I'm afraid that I'll hate it, which I don't know where that comes from. Hate what? Being married, I I, I think every man has this thing where they want to be free, right? Like, nobody wants, no man wants to feel like he's tied down, Mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like a lot of men, myself included, have gone through our entire lives, right? You've been chasing younger men, specifically younger men. You go through your whole life chasing what you think are these beautiful, attractive women, right, for you. Mm -hmm. You think, oh... Like, and you, you go, you, you go through that phase of your life and a lot of dudes will not get girls during that phase of their life. Right. They're just always chasing it. And then you get to this point where you're like 30 years old, you're 34, whatever you get into these higher stages of your life. And now all of a sudden the women around you that it's acceptable for you to chase now. Right. According to the world standards or whatever, it's acceptable for you to you need to go after older women and those older women to a lot of men. It's just like I don't want used goods. You know, it's like I don't it's like you feel like you're getting shafted, I guess I should say, you know, the older a man gets the more like the kind of women that are coming into his life. You you almost feel like you're just getting the short end of the stick because you spent your whole life trying to get girls that you never could get. Right. Well, no, you could get that. No, you but you didn't. To. Like young you guys, not, you chose not to. Yeah, but young guys really struggle getting girls. Right? <laughs> Isn't that I mean, a thing? Do, I mean, do they? I think so. So then, young women would also struggle finding men because you know we're close no. to fifty fifty when it comes girls to girls. Don't struggle right? getting dudes though, getting right? Good ones, <laughs> or just getting one. I don't know. I guess. I think it's easier for them definitely to find one, probably versus a guy find finding because like they. I don't, I'm not saying they don't have to put in work. That's not how I want to put it. 
right? It's different. But it's definitely easier for them to, like, it's not, it's it's easier for him to get that gag, right? Like, the she can go up and, like, talk to him. Yeah. And that's all it takes most of the time. Where a guy, like, has to, like, really try to put in work for you them. Like, to, like, get nervous their doing it, too, though, or whatever? But you, like, you, have, you really have to put in work to, like, feelings. get them to, like, especially if they know there's a bunch of guys pursuing them, like, they're not going to just necessarily go for you. Like, you're going to have to stand out from the rest of them. Right. For the girl, like, you, I mean, if you're looking for a relationship, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, they're going to have to stand out. But if you're just, obviously, you're not always looking for a relationship right when you meet somebody, maybe either. Like, you're going to see if it, like, becomes something, right? If you're, like, really looking for it and trying to find it, it's probably not going to be there anyways, you know, because you're not relaxed. You're not being yourself. You're, mm-hmm. That's you're, putting, off, you're putting off those nervous negative energies <laughs> that, honestly, no one likes. That's a great point, and that's exactly how I was for a long time growing up. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't grow up in like I wasn't I wasn't I didn't go to public schools and stuff, so I was a little bit more shy. And so I'm just speaking from my own personal experience when I talk about this. I feel like there's a a big majority of dudes that grow up, they get to a certain phase where they feel like now I have what it takes to actually get the beautiful women that I want because I have a certain level of confidence and experience and I've worked my ass off for this, right? And now they feel like I'm getting kind of shafted. They want me to get married now. Everybody wants me to get married and have kids and I just, I never got my, what, what, what is it? Like people have midlife crisis, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like when the when the word marriage comes up, you go into this this panic phase because you're like, I'm never going to get mine. <laughs> like all the the experiences I wanted to have with females, that's about to go away. And I never got to have it in the first place. Why is it going away? Because you're getting married now. Now you're just stuck with one woman. You know, like it's this fear that, that dudes have. Oh, but you don't have so the you... desire to have a family or start a family or like raise people in your, ref- I guess, in your reflection to be you know to mold and to model for and to like make other great things happen yeah you do you you do but you want to find that perfect person to do that with right yep what's the perfect person that perfect anything doesn't exist a perfect job vehicle house (laughs) if you're constantly pursuing absolute perfection you're you're never going to see things for what they really are you're going to be looking through it through and past everything so you got married young yep yeah it's the test marriage it's like, se- it's like 75% of first marriages and a divorce. You get married young. You experience some things. You learn some things. So 75%. That's It might be not quite that high, but it's, it's somewhere around there. Right. But either way, that statistic that now, I feel like that now applies to our generation, right? Mm-hmm. Like, as far as the years go by, I feel like that number gets higher and higher for sure. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Because people are not living for tomorrow anymore either. More people are just living for today. Mm-hmm. They're not looking for like the future, or they don't have like goals. Should I put it that way? Yeah. Like, people aren't really making goals necessarily. The goal should be for a young man. Do you think the goal should be to get married and have children early? If that's what you want. Um, the older people I talk to, like I have friends that are in their fifties, and they <clears throat> basically say that that's their life's greatest accomplishment. It's nothing to do with their job or their house or how much money they have or how much stuff they have. Their greatest accomplishment is, like, raising their children and seeing them, like, grow into, like, wonderful things. Yeah, that's that's getting to the end of your life and not having a family or children. I see that when I go home and talk to my parents and stuff, and Mm -hmm. they've got this house full of children, right? And it's – you think – if if I'm at their age and I'm gonna I'm gonna be in a house with no one, mm-hmm. <laughs> you think what a waste of a life, right? Yeah, you missed out on lots of experiences. So your guys is you you. Too but you might have also experienced things those people are never gonna experience either because you chose not. Like mm-hmm. it all depends on what you want, right? Like I if you like... want if you want children, like cool, like do your thing, you know, like but do what you want to do. Like don't have kids if you don't want to have kids. Like, then you're just, like, doing something you don't want to do. Like, go do what you want to do, right? I just so feel. So you're happy. I have, I feel <laughs> like, I feel like a lot of guys just feel like if I get married, I'm just going to be forever trapped. You know, even if you really. 75% end in divorce. Yeah. So what but, are you, are damn. you really trapped? 
It's I know, but it's like not, you isn't don't the majority of those divorces at, then end and they like destroy the guy's life and you're ruined from this day forward, you know? You um, yeah. you might be paying child support out of your your butt for the next 20 years, like who knows? Like it's whatever. A, if yeah, if you decide to throw yourself a pity party like I did and what whatever, you know. It doesn't have to ruin your life. Paying child support doesn't ruin your life. It might make it more difficult to function because now you're giving away a bunch of money to take care of your kids. Yeah. It's not ruining your life. Hmm. But, I mean, essentially, at the same time, you were, you're also spending that money when you were with them. Like, you know, like you're probably... Buying you might four not, wheelers you, and things like that. You might, you might have spent more. It depends. But, yeah, <laughs> you just never <laughs> know. Like, how much were you spending that? Like, in, in essence, when you get divorced, if you pay child support, you might actually spend less. <laughs> than you were while you were married. So now, not saying you do, because there's definitely guys that get. Like, but you can. It de- it also varies by state, right? What states do allow like people to do to their spouse when they get divorced, right? True, true. Because some people can really like run them through the ringer and like take them for everything they got. But and would you rather have happen. the money and not just never have had kids? Like, oh, I just wish I could have that money back, and I never would have had these kids. Well, yeah, you, I mean, if you have, have your kids, have... you never think that because, like, you love your kids, right? Exactly. So what's more, I mean, what's yeah. the money more important than the kids? Not really. No, but, like, for you to do the things you want to do when you get divorced, I, it, I mean, it definitely puts, like, a damper on things, right? Mm-hmm. Or for them to, like, take it. It's, it's not even just the kids. They're more or less taking everything, like, you worked for while you were with them, right? Like, you also worked but for those kids. you're married, so, like, your time is – you're you're, put, you're supposed to be putting into it equally. You yeah. might be making more money or she might be making more money, but – when you get married, this is supposed to be a team thing. You're oh, doing it sure. together, so. But you feel like you lost something for sure. Like, oh, you feel like they hundred percent agree. They with took you. something from you. They took your, they took your soul. <laughs> when you get divorced, <laughs> yeah, but you like you took you took yeah. their time and made yeah. them have kids. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you ruined them because now who wants this woman that's got one, two, three, four, five, seven kids, right? Yeah. So now they're getting back into the dating pool and they're like, hey, you know. So uh, I got to tell you something. I have, you know, a couple of kids, <laughs> you know, thanks a lot, skis. Like, damn. I damn. Get it, but they also, like you said, they also chose to have those kids too. Absolutely. They were willing to put up that sacrifice. And if they get divorced, they have to, like you, they'd have to have that in the back of their head too, right? Like this could happen. And this is what my life's going to be like if this happens. So yeah. like, I guess I get some made by one person, the choice. It's like I made her have kids. Right. Or like other people make them have the kids, you know? Oh, Agree. They might. Some people might talk them into it, like. But so, am know. I wrong in my assumption that <laughs> dudes feel like if they get married, they're gonna miss out on life? Do you think so? That I'm wrong in that assumption? Yeah. I, miss out on what part of life? The female part. Chasing girls. Yeah. Well, yeah. I would hope if you got married, you're gonna be missing out on the chasing. The <laughs> right. But that's what the grass is always greener, right? Yeah, but that's what stops guys, <laughs> and it's that. That's what I'm saying. Like that's what stops guys from getting married is the resentment. I think to a certain point that I never got all the girls I wanted to get. Like women get to get out of their hoe phase, right? That's a thing. Like women get to go through and get out of their hoe phase, and then they go get a dude who's willing to take on all that. That extra spiritual baggage that was left inside of them from a thousand dudes, right? And you're mm-hmm. like, I, I never got to do that. And I'm just, now I have to take you? Like, this is what, like, and, and, like, I never get to do it. Kids might take that feeling away. I know, but I'm saying that's what dudes, you don't think that that's what's going through a lot of guys' heads? When, when women come to them and say, hey, let's get married. <laughs> You know? That's the thing, though. The, like a guy, it's a bad thing because, like, like, and I, I'm not saying I it's right. By like the Andrew way. Tate says, right? Like, girls when, like, there's different age groups for guys. They're like in their high point, right? When they're in like 30s, 40s, late, they, they've yeah. experienced enough to where they're confident in doing what they're doing. Where women's good times are like in their early 20s, right? Until they get older, they didn't have their kids yet. That's when they like. Guys get to experience their best part of life, most likely in that area, right? Mm. And women are experiencing. And not to sound terrible, but they're like not their, always, their value but depreciates quicker. Where all men seems to go up as they get age. older, yeah, you know, like because they're they're more they see guys more mature and have the things they need in life to support them. Like right? when is a man his, at his most valuable? 
when he After has, when he has his crap together and he has, you know, yeah, when he he's has got worked. a nest egg and he's got some things, right? Yeah, but exactly. That's not necessarily when a woman's at her most valuable. And I'm not saying all women, but a lot of women are not going and getting those things in their prime. They're looking for that man that has those things. Which is why younger them. women like older men. But they're, I'm not saying, because they're definitely women that go out there and, like, pursue a career and, like, take care of themselves and, like, make the money, right? There are some women that go on. That, that's the kind of woman, like, you're envisioning probably when you, like, if you're going to get married and have kids, is a very, like, successful woman. Like, someone necessarily like you that has, like, the same goals, right? And, mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. and wants to, like, have something. Where, like, the women, a lot of women you're talking about, you're dating are women that, like, maybe are just looking for a guy to have kids and have the family life where some women will pursue more. They'll do more, right? You want them to have aspirations, right? Like keep going. Exactly. Not stop. Like keep working at something. It's, it's, it's a tricky one, man. I think the longer men go without getting married, the lower the chances get of them ever wanting to in, in our world today, you know, cause you, it's like procrastination builds fear, right? In anything you're supposed to do in life that you know you're supposed to do, if you hold it off, you hold it off. The more you hold it off, the more you can psych yourself up into thinking, this is really going to hurt me, you know, <laughs> especially when you're looking around at the world. This can go for anything in life. You know, you're going to go start a business. You're going to go, you know, start working out, right? The new year, I'm going to go work out. New year, new me, all this BS. The more you procrastinate on it and the more you, you let time go, the more you're able to get inside your head and you, you will screw up a good op- what could have been a really good opportunity. And I think now we're living in this phase where dudes are like, especially young guys, which I would love to talk to some really young guys on this mm-hmm. podcast once. But you think it's like with everything we see around us and they see their dads getting divorced, they see their older brothers getting divorced, they see it. And the world is just you go on and you watch vid- the Andrew Tate videos and you watch all these videos that saying women are just out to get us. They're they're the devil. And it might not be true. I'm not saying any of that is true. I'm just saying what that's kind of the women perception. Are they going at? What kind of women is Andrew Tate going after? <laughs> yeah, but what kind of women is any guy really going after? Like, it's like, if how do we if even you know? find someone that shares your same morals and your same beliefs? I'm, not, I'm not saying things still can't go wrong because obviously it does all the time. But right, if you find someone that's raised similar to you, believes similar things to you as you do, then just take a chance. So instead of just like going out and like, oh, I'm at the gym and I found this girl. She's cute. I like her. I'm gonna just make her get married and have kids with her and see if it works out. Mm. Yeah, but damn, man. Once you start digging into a woman's life, a lot of guys can get turned off real quick if you dig very deep past the surface, right? You're going to find out, especially you're going to find Why? out. Why dig so deep? Do you want, well, you want to do your due diligence, be... right? You want to find out if this is going to be a good woman for you. Yeah, people can change too, though. It's true. I'm not the same as I was when I got married. In some ways better, some ways probably not. Do you think you'll ever get married again? I am going to get married again, yeah. I definitely think people shouldn't, like, rush into marriage anymore. Like, people always got married. Like, back in the day, right, they'd pop out kids, they'd get married, and they'd stay together. Because, but that was also, like, their their morals were, like, well, I have to stay with this person and, like, make this work out. Mm. But people don't think that anymore, right? I think people should probably date longer before they start, like long enough to know. Like Pe- people have you kids know that person get married today though. A kid is a bigger commitment than a marriage is. So why is everyone so afraid <laughs> to get married? Exactly. No one's afraid to have kids, but everyone's afraid to get married. I mean, there's a lot of people not having sense. kids anymore. There's either, a lot right? of people that just have kids to have kids too. <laughs> That's they're the not thing. married. They might have a bunch of kids, but they're not married. You know, I'm, are, not get, I'm not getting tied down with marriage, but let me have three kids. But people right. are more or less having zero sense kids less now than they used to, right? Like, people yeah. were pumping out, like, ten kids at a time before. Well, that Now was, some people are just like, let's get a dog, and that's it, you know? anything else to yeah. do, though. They were, like, they were, like, living on the farm. Yeah. We needed farm hands, you know? Yeah. We need kids to fix that fence and milk them cows. We need to go back to having farms. Like, I want to have a farm. <laughs> Buy a farm and have your 10 kids. I want to because, yes. Jesus, man, our food supply is going straight down the toilet right now. I'm guessing there's less women that want to, like, fulfill that role, though, too. Well, the they're like on the farm the doing that stuff. traditional gender roles and stuff like that, too. Yeah. Most people aren't into that. I would have no problem with 
that style of life. You know, if I was younger and getting married again and my wife wanted to stay home and like have kids and I would go to work and she would take care of the house. I have no problem with that. Mm. So, I, I honestly, I think that's ideal. Your children would be around someone who actually cares about them and takes care of them. I would hope. I mean, there's some bad moms out there, but maybe the life you're talking about, you need to go out of country and get like, no, okay. Women like that like what? Canadian women, Jared. That's what you need. I have a girlfriend. <laughs> no, I'm saying it's like a joke. it is a joke. I'm just saying right. in general, Come that's again. what guys probably need to. Do. Like you see a lot of guys, and they have. We'll speak from like they have like Hispanics, right? Like their women almost are deaf. Like if they're in Mexico, and like live there their whole lives, they're almost like. I mean, their their lifestyle is a lot different, right? They're willing to like stay home and have the kids and like do all that still. Yeah. Like women now, like they want to have the kid, but they still want to like go party afterwards and you stay home. I'm well, not saying all women are the, like the that. Culture, That's not what I'm the saying. culture puts it out there, though, yeah. when like gr- little girls are idolizing Cardi B or whoever the hell else it might be at the time, or young oh, yeah. men idolizing idiots, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know? we do. We do it to ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> it seems That's like... empowering. You know, yeah. Cardi B's empowering. So, <laughs> yeah. That's a good message to send to other women. Like, like be like Cardi. She is. I like that message. Yeah, yeah. Cardi and Nikki. Take movies and, and books, but you great know, message. Play, play WAP on on the radio, but make sure you take books and like and stuff out of the libraries. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> teaching young kids, boy, I've seen some of those books they put in in schools about teaching kids how to properly s a d. It's like. <laughs> I saw the one picture of like a finger going into a rectum, and it said like "swoop" or something. It was like this, it was like the sound effect that went with it. It was just it was ridiculous. I was like, "Ah, oh, man, that's what you're getting now, right?" Yeah, it's another fear to topple on top of everything. <laughs> like when you're oh. a guy, you're thinking, oh, "I'm gonna get married and have kids now." That's another thing for you to worry about as you, you, you look into this world. Like, do I want to bring a kid into this world? If you're, you're, yeah, if you're watching too much news and too much other crap too. Like, that's one hundred CNN. Turn off Fox, turn all of it off. And but if you, you just, know, if you just live your life, you wouldn't even know those things were happening. You're absolutely right. But you know they're being brought brought into that world, right? Yeah, that's the problem. Like it's not even necessarily you watching it; it's knowing you're going to put them out there with that stuff, right? And if you're you, right. If you you're going to have to step back and just let them do their thing. Because if you, you educate you only... your children and teach them and explain yeah. to them exactly what's going on, being exposed to those things should not affect them drastically. If you're taking the time to actually parent. Yeah, for sure. But they'll still make choices once they're older. You know, they're going to make their choices. Oh, for sure. They're going to do whatever they want. I mean, that's why it's gotten where it's gotten now. Right? But modeling good <laughs> behavior, mm. like yourself doing the right things and being a good person can go a long ways. That's what I was thinking the other day. You know how they always talk about, like, they got all these, like, tranny bills and stuff like that going out into, like, these states. It's like, man, you guys that are fighting it now, you guys are, like, you guys are, I'm not saying anything, but, like, we had 80s music videos where dudes are, like, dressed as women. Like, like Poison and stuff like that. Motley like, Crue. You guys started it, and now, like, but now it's our fault. Yeah. Our parents are, like, gener- younger people. Our parents' generation <laughs> ruined everything. They smoked tons of cigarettes, drink, <laughs> drinking and driving, doing drugs, just having the time of their life. Yeah. And then we came along, and we were the monsters, you know? And it's like, you guys already, you guys ruined cocaine. You guys ruined <laughs> alcohol. You literally ruined everything because you abused it all. And now everyone <laughs> else has to pay the price. That's true. It was the first taste of freedom for this for that generation, The free-loving right? hippies in the 70s, you know, they were yeah. probably doing some things they shouldn't have been doing. But the 80s came along, like. My parents and they, they went hard and ruined it for the rest of us. So how is how does something like that get fixed then? The world that we live in now, how does it get fixed? You said earlier, you know, set a good example for your children and mm-hmm. all that, right? I understand all that. That makes perfect sense to me. But when you're talking about children, you think you think about how easy it is for them to learn things. And for things to be imprinted on them. And you think, well, if I'm going to have children, I'm going to have to send them to school, right? And right now, our schooling system is just one of the most shady things in the world. I know, but here's the thing. That's that's another. That's I know. I know, right? That's another weird argument because it's like you don't have to send them to school. But if you don't, we're living in a world now where you can get child services called on you. For ho- trying to homeschool your children, and also if you want to homeschool your children, the government will involve themselves and say, okay, you can homeschool them. We're going to give you the curriculum. This yeah. is what you're going to teach them. Yeah. So they're still interjecting in that way. Yeah. So it's like, 
How much control do you really have over even raising your children anymore? Well, they want your kids to have like a basic set of skills to function in the world, and I understand wanting that. I mean, it makes sense, right? Hey, teach your kids to read and write. Fair? I can teach them that. Sounds fair, right? They don't need to know anything about transgenderism or what you do with your butthole late at night, you know, with your friend. You know how you go back is the answer is it's not what everybody wants to hear, but the answer is like something so bad has to happen. <laughs> that like it like things fix themselves right like not realistically like you see like you can even use the bible or anything as an example like dynasties fall right mm. like things happen civilizations fall and then like necessarily like things like reset themselves almost right rise from the ashes <laughs> right i was yeah i was gonna <laughs> as long say. as human like humans don't kill everyone off like eventually things start over and like people are like okay well Things need, like even really something really bad happens, like it'll change things. Even something like nine eleven happened, and then everyone got along for like two years. Yeah, yeah. it was <laughs> like fun. everyone just was just peace and love, and then that just it's not a good answer, but it's, it's almost true. <laughs> that it's a, it's it's very deep, I think, but still. it is true, and that <laughs> answer scares, and it should scare all of us because the the underlying the underlying message there is that poverty. And struggle and strife and brokenness creates great human beings or can encourage great human beings and great relationships between human beings. And that's scary because we're all living great right now. And we just it maybe it is the media. Right. You said earlier, like you just need to turn off. You need to get away well, from the media. Well, there's no like just possible. regular news. You know, you don't like you don't hear statistics or just regular like information. I don't not need, one I don't side care of news about, necessarily. I don't care about your opinion on something, like, whether it's any of the news channels. I don't care. I don't want to turn on Fox and hear someone's opinion on something. Right. Tell me facts. Give me numbers. Show me what's going on. I'll make that decision myself. You right. need a news channel that's not one sided. Yeah, that's not choosing like a party or like a way to present things. Yeah. But, but there's money involved, so how do you? Yeah, there's advertising dollars, advertisers. Like Pepsi doesn't want to spend money on this station because they're promoting something they don't believe in, right? I'm not saying which one it is. I have no idea, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But that, and then so people that, hate so that everybody dict- that thinks independently. So that dictates what that <laughs> company shows, though. If their sponsors don't want them talking about certain things or expressing certain things, or they're only going to spend money for things they believe in, so it's I don't really don't know how it's fixed. I mean, the internet, which you could put a video up on YouTube, right, and talk about stuff. But if it's not something they want to listen to or want to put out there, they can make it so people don't see it as easily. It's true. So. Yeah, you don't know what's real anymore and what's fake either. You know, the the news could be just a complete green screen, whatever anymore. And it's almost to the point where we can't tell. We've created AI and AI basically can create anything now, right? It's it's chat GPT. (laughs) It's coming for everybody, man. Open AI. All this nonsense. I watched that South Park episode. It was pretty good. I have never, I'll admit it right here on BTG Squad. I've never watched a single episode of South Park. I'll send you a couple to watch. Why he, should so you can enjoy He doesn't it. like South Park. I'm That's curious. Right. I know he doesn't like South Park. <laughs> I'm he doesn't curious. Like how they draw it. <laughs> right? Is that right? Well, it, it was, looks it was so. Car- fake. It was car- it was cardboard initially, cardboard cutouts because they had no money. Okay, and they kept the style the same. What are they supposed? To- you want them to update it? Yeah, so, I can't so, get over it. So it looks like some uh, the like Toy Story good, Four. It's 2023. You have to have a certain mindset, which you guys both have, and I don't. Okay, I'm a. I'm like, I think I'm too visual of a person, and I'm a little too dumb to appreciate South Park. Honestly, I'll admit that. I'm a little too dumb to appreciate it because, like you're saying, they are they make a lot of really good political points in South Park. They're making a lot of great, like, realistic points, the underlying messages of the show. You, yeah. Right. I'm the kind of guy, I don't want, I'm too lazy. I don't want to dig through any of that when I'm watching television. I just want to watch, like, I'll watch American Dad. They're not giving you any political messages in America. I mean, maybe they are, but I'm blind to yeah. them, right? So I just want to sit there. When I'm watching TV, you I'm want the guy. I want to veg out. Straight up humor. You don't, want, you don't want to think about it. I don't want to hear it. But you, yeah. I probably should dig into South Park a little bit. Well, they they always, like, give it, like, not always. I shouldn't say that. But there's, like, usually a message. And usually you see them leaning towards one side, and you think that that's going to be, like, the whole message of the episode. And then somewhere along the line, they basically give you the counter the counterpoint to the initial one you know so you so you have to think about it a little bit mm. 
you know? Do you think they're making a difference? I, I feel like it's like comedians. You know, comedians, a lot of times if you listen to them, they're really trying to nail a point home, like mm-hmm. like a real point. Obviously, they're doing it in in laughter and all that. They're throwing out all these jokes. But you can tell if you watch it, oh, they were really trying to say something. Mm-hmm. But it's like, is it better to just say it, you know, like go the Andrew Tate route or well, go the Tucker Carlson route or whoever else, the Trump route? People, is it better to do that? Because I feel like when you're telling jokes – and you're trying to get a point across at the same time, it's still lost. Well, you're still reaching you're some people, but they're it. not going to get like canceled or shut down because of the way they're presenting. Yeah, but it. you're reaching the people where the who other agree. people are like, they're going to like, well, we don't like what he's saying, shut him down. But if he's a comedian, they're like, like you said, there's they might be dumb to it that they're just not even paying attention to it. You can interpret it to what you want it to be, though. South Park mm-hmm. makes the episode, it gets done. You and I might watch the same episode and not see the same message being sent out there either, you know? Right, so isn't it better to just say it straightforward what I want to say? Wouldn't you rather have people thinking on their own? Nobody thinks get, anymore. I don't want the I don't want the opinions. That's what I'm telling you. I or don't you want to watch the things. show that gives me. I don't want to watch Tucker Carlson's opinion on something. I don't care. Yeah. Do, I, do I like Tucker Carlson? Actually, I do. But I don't want to watch. I don't watch his stuff. But I don't so, want to hear what he has to say because I already know what he's going to say before he says it. So why would I want to waste my time watching it or listening to it? Be, well, because so you can hammer home the same feelings that I have. I already have those thoughts and feelings. I don't need Tucker Carlson's feelings. Yeah, but there's other. If they're showing you the other side, I guess I get. Like, if you already know the one side, it's good to listen to them. So then you're hearing both sides, I guess. I spend more time trolling like CNN. Yeah, so that, that's what I was going to say. Because <laughs> I want to hear what other people are thinking. I don't care what people right. who think similar to me have to say. I want to hear what the other people have to say. Okay, so that's... And I want to argue with those people. It's valuable <laughs> for you to watch, like, CNN, for instance. Mm-hmm. But the people who are watching CNN and agreeing to CNN, right? They agree. That's like they're just spitting out their narrative, the same mm-hmm. thing, their echo chamber. Their... Those people need to hear an opposing point, too. Like, for you to go to CNN and listen to there and criticize that stuff. The people that are watching CNN, they also need a Tucker Carlson, right, Who's who's speaking... Some semblance of like, I don't know, like the common sense, the yeah, like, view. right. So it's it is it's kind of important to have both of those, right? You need somebody. Somebody has to say, hey, that's not right. What you're saying, right? We have to have it. You, we might not want to listen to it because we're like that's common sense. We know, mm-hmm. but you still need it, and people need to say it. And it, and I feel like when people are telling it in jokes all the time, it's the point gets lost. It's like, I'm not going to go watch your comedy special, right? Even though you were making some great points. But if you come out and you say, I'm against this, this, and that. Now, the problem with saying that now is that you'll (laughs) get deleted from everything. You'll go to prison. Yeah, like anything can happen to you. Unless you're Chappelle, who almost gets canceled but hasn't gotten canceled yet. Yeah, so He's trying to, though. He really is. He is trying. He doesn't care. But he's got, what did he say? He's got fuck it money. Can I say that? Right. Yeah, (laughs) he does. He's got 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 enough money. He doesn't care. He's going to say whatever he wants to, and therefore he can be canceled because he doesn't care. He himself also turned down his like an old like a big contract, right? He's like, I'm not. He turned down all that money mm-hmm. from like Comedy Central. Yeah, I I just feel weak. I'll just I just feel weak when I hear, or when I even when I when I feel like I need to say something, but I feel like oh, better not say it. You know, I get this this rage that builds up in me like you little b, you know, like you baby back like. The fact that you paused and hesitated to say something that was right or you felt was right, you know, it's just a weakness that I don't, I hate seeing it in myself. I hate seeing it in other people. You know, I'm not saying comedians are wrong. I'm not saying South Park is wrong. I love the fact that they're putting their point out there. Mm -hmm. I just hate the fact that people who really have something to say and they really have an opinion and it differs from this person's opinion you put it out there and you'll get canceled and banned and go to jail. You'll get fired from your job. What if you, you don't know? care, though? If you don't care, you'll still go to so jail. You might, you'll you, still you might get, get canceled. kicked out of a local establishment for arguing about something. Or if you're doing, I'm talking on a small scale. Mm-hmm. If you're choosing I, not to say something, sometimes you know, like in your own head, though, like even if I say it, is it going to get anywhere? Like you know yourself, like you're, you're, you're saving yourself, like trying to get yourself worked up right 
<laughs> yeah, but it's it's still. It's uh, I don't like always not being saying quiet don't either. You guys know me. I have a hard time not <laughs> saying something when the situation <laughs> arises. But I'm not afraid of making an enemy either. You know. What if the enemy is the United States government? <laughs> Probably. You know, is. and the LT because they're on the side of the of everything crazy and woke right now. That's the government. Mm-hmm. They're on that side of it, and you're gonna fight the United States government well, you have so because you want to make a point. The government too is the problem. It's it's broken up into it's like right. You have the FBI, CIA. Like who's in charge? <laughs> it's I just wish like I you say. Like that. you have all these breakaway companies. It's just like if you break something down so far, there's all these people in charge, but you don't know who's in charge. Whoever raises the interest rates is in charge. <laughs> that's true. Whoever is in control of the interest rate is in control in control of the country. Yeah, I think that's fair. Amazon's in control they of the can, country. They can stop anything they want to. <clears throat> oh, people are you know selling too many houses, making too much money. Let's just uh, let's just raise this interest rate up and slow down the people from doing that stuff. Yeah. Oh, or eight percent for a banks. house now. So, well, it was eight percent. It was eight percent twenty years ago. It's not that big a deal that it's eight percent again. There's their there's their point, you know. Yeah, but eight percent now versus then, like, what's your inflation rate for? price to what people make right well, that's yeah, the inf- difference inflation is probably eight percent so the interest rate being eight percent makes sense they allegedly say i don't know if this is 100 percent true but like when you buy your house what you pay for it throughout the term of the loan over 30 years is what they think that house should be worth in 30 years does that make sense to you yeah that pisses you're paying me off five, too. You're, but you, you pay a five percent on the house that you buy when that loan's being done, you're going to pay a ton of money in interest, right? Mm-hmm. Allegedly, that house will be worth every penny that you put into it. So when you sell it, that's why when you sell your primary house, you don't pay taxes on that money. Because you already did through all the interest that you paid. I feel Does like when you, sense? I, yeah, I feel like banks are a huge scam. <laughs> well, the gap between banks. everything is what's it's, so bad. It's like your money and the, the price, right? Your price of stuff and your inflation rate, the gap between them now is higher than it was right 30 years ago probably people might be making more money but things might be that just more expensive yeah so like your the gapage between is probably just that much more i don't know i hate the fact (laughs) that banks are allowed this fractional reserve banking like setup that they have right now like why can't i loan out money you know you can't yeah, but to the same amount, to the same to extent back, that the banks are loaning it out, you know they're they're able to go you through these have. deals where <laughs> if I give you a hundred, if I give my bank a hundred dollars, they can loan out on my money. What is it, a thousand or ten thousand or whatever the number is, a certain percentage of your money, and they don't have to have that money there. You know they can just they're able to multiply your money like that. You know through these loopholes, and I understand you have to. Our economy has to work a certain way. I understand things work a certain way. But it's like, why don't you give me a little more interest on my money then if you're able to split like my money up into these? You three percent you're getting Oh, I don't like that. Well, I made 10 cents last, last quarter. Yeah, I'm, I'm funding you. <laughs> and you're going to, like the balls of the bank to send me the statement at the end of the year saying, this is what we paid you. I'm <laughs> like, you my money. Yeah. <laughs> It's that, like that this is, is a, a problem is for us. Yeah. Well, could you start your own bank and offer oh, a, higher, yeah. a higher rate of return? People have tried so, that. So these banks, they uh, they don't give you any money for your money, and yet they're still collapsing and failing. So. <laughs> Good could you, imagine, could you imagine if they actually paid you a decent amount? Yeah, they would never make it. They would it. never make it. Yeah. Well, that's what the Federal Reserve is, right? When they raise the percentages, they're they're raising the percentages to the banks of what they got to pay them. So that's essentially gets moved out. That's why, like, when they raise interest rates on us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's what that's why it? you get your loans at, like, a local bar <laughs> or a bookie or something, you know? You got to find I someone. I should. You got to find someone different. To invest, I should be. To invest your money in. I should be allowed to practice fractional reserve banking in my personal life. You probably can you know? if you don't get caught. There might be some loop. Well, I'd like to know how I could. That's what I want to know. Because if I could, I would. I'd loan you a hundred dollars. You'd give me a hundred dollars, and I automatically and then, now have ten thousand. I can loan to someone else, right? And they're gonna pay me interest. Thanks. And then, then I'll just give you your little hundred dollars back, Justin. It's not give actually. I won't yeah, give you. I will, actually, I will give you that hundred. No, actually, right I now. won't give you your hundred back. 
When I'll you give ask you for it, I'll give cents. you half of it. You know? <laughs> I'll give you 10 cents at the end of the year and keep your 100 Well, if I want here. that 100, though, you have to have it available. No, so I, can I don't. I, I don't have to have your whole <laughs> that, 100. Getting, when you come to me, out. I only have to have $5 available. So I'm not using the <laughs> yeah, bank okay. anymore. And I'll give you five at a time for the next two months. saying, I want my $100 months. back. Nope, I can only give you 50. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> you know, I just don't have your money. That's all I got. Nah, that's not fair. I want to go back to the to kind of where we started. The marriage thing. Yeah. yeah. Cuz it's a curious man. topic for me, dog. Yeah, I know it is. <laughs> you, know, you think about it a lot. You basically told I've, us all your fears in the last like 15 minutes. I've never been married. I don't have any children. You've been married, you have children. You've been married with no children. So we're kind of completing the circle here, the circle of life, right? Yeah. I feel like I should be married and I should have children. 100%. Okay. okay, obviously, I've procrastinated on it up to this point in my life, and that's just. <sighs> Why yeah. do you have kids while you're older, though? Right, like people always want to have them young, but maybe having them older is actually the I better think way older to go. Probably would be better. You know, you're fifty, sixty, seventy. You got nothing better to do. I've yeah. created more fear around the subject for myself, though. Okay, yeah, that's but, what I'm saying. But now you created lived your more life. fear. Okay, now you've got to go do those things you wanted to do. No, like, I right? haven't. But you, but you That's have a the bold face lie, okay, Skeet. But you've had the opportunity to do this. No, I like haven't that. had the opportunity either. You see where we live, Skis? There are three thousand men to every one woman in this town. Why? Well, but only you are stopping. Why are yourself, you so afraid right? of failing? Are you afraid of failing because other people will know you failed? Is that the? Do you only care about other people's opinions? I'm not afraid of failing. I'm afraid of. I'm afraid. Of the rest of my life being like, why didn't I do this? And why didn't I do that? Why didn't I do that? And I never got that. And I never, res- like, that can build up in a man's head. I think they call it like catastrophizing. I have a, I think that's what that's you called. You don't want to resent other people. I would like to interject. For the choices you made. Yeah, I'd like to interject into this conversation. I have a girlfriend <laughs> right now. I love her very much. Okay. So this is, this conversation has nothing to do with my girlfriend or anything. It's I'm trying to present a general argument for a lot of the situation that I think a lot of men are in and the situation that I was in for a very long time, you know, just kind of feeling like you got shat when it came to the female side of life. You just got you got the leftovers. You got scraps. You got shafted. You were pushed to the side by women for years. And then it's like all of a sudden, oh, it's like I got ran through the mud for so many years and now i'm just i gotta get married and have children and and all of the extra work and the extra responsibilities that comes with all of that and because i know myself i know that if i am going to get married and i am going to have children there's i know i'm going to focus on that 100 percent. so i'm not going to allow myself there is no failing at that once i get married Like, that's my mentality. This is it. I'm going to focus everything on this one woman. I'm going to focus everything on my children. You can still fail, man. You can still fail. But. You can't control what they're doing, essentially, right? That's the thing. Like, they're going to make their choice. Things in life can happen, too, that are outside of both of your control. Yeah. Yeah. anything, Anything can happen, but living in fear of that, you're missing out on. I'm just saying you're missing out on life. If you, no. You're missing out on what life has to offer fully. You're right. So if you think the priority is I don't want, like, leftovers, I don't want someone that's been used, well, you you might be the leftovers and you might be used too, you know, in their eyes it's, or in it's, someone else's eyes. You know, like, you're not two 18-year-old virgins that, you know, met at Bible camp and you're going to get married when you turn 18 and start a family. Everyone's got baggage. Everyone has things that have happened in their life. That's made them who they are, made them afraid of something, made them not want to get married, led them down whatever path they got led down. But it's all because of what happened in your life. It's also the mental aspect. You're right. One hundred percent right. It's also the mental aspect. And like I said, I, I feel very responsible. Right. So if I get into something, I feel extremely responsible for that thing. So Mm -hmm. if you're going to get into a marriage, you also understand that you're getting involved with the the government. (laughs) It's something we can't avoid. And any intelligent man is going to think about that. And if you think about what the government 
has the potential. Like we're saying, oh, it's not going to ruin your life. If you can get divorced, like that's not the message that I'm seeing from the people around me that are getting divorced. The majority of them I'm seeing, they got majorly screwed. <laughs> like they got wrecked. And I'm being a responsible man and a responsible adult. I'm always thinking I can't afford to waste not a second of my life. You know, so I'm already to this point in my life. I've worked my ass off to get to a certain place. I can't waste. If I go down the road five years and somebody decides, oh, I don't love you anymore, we're done. And the government steps in and says, we're not done. You and I are just getting started. She's done and she can go. Okay? Let's let's talk about Mm -hmm. the rest of your life. Uncle Sam here is Mm -hmm. here for you. I can't afford those. If it's a year of my life, I can't afford to waste one day screwing around with a divorce court or the government or you trying to take my children away from me because, oh, I want to educate them a certain way. Like, even if I'm still married, I can't afford to waste any of this time in my life. It's not, so, it wouldn't be wasting your time. I'll use you your would be words. doing things to, like, okay, guys, protect you. your family or your children or your life. It's not wasting time. It's just another, it's another challenge or another thing you have to deal with, which is what people do, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At your job anywhere at the gym something's challenging you you're not wasting your time getting stronger or learning a new like a new uh, thing at work right right so why would that be wasting your time it might not be fun to go through but it's gonna you're gonna work through it right your, your own words let's hear it. ready this let's hear, let's it. hear it to make you a better person <laughs> it makes really good people is going through the struggle you doing yeah. all the stuff is going to make really good people, right? It makes the best of people. So that'll make you a better person by going through that struggle. Damn. Right? Damn. He got you. I have nothing else to <laughs> he say. He got you, man. Ladies and gentlemen. Well, no, I'm, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be mean, lights out. but you did, right? Like, I, like just, I'm not trying to like push it on you, but I'm saying man. like, like you said, it makes you a better person. He's right? got you good on that one. You're right. You're both right. You did. It's a, it's a lot of thinking. And when you You're overthink something. something. I overthink things. So what's the what's the worst case scenario? You get married, <sighs> you have a kid. As soon as the kid's born, you get divorced, or before the kid's even born, you get divorced. Right? That'd probably be the worst case scenario, right? Okay, she's so, pregnant, and now she doesn't want to be with your ass. Right. So now she divorced you. Worst case scenario, where does that lead you down? So maybe you and I have different opinions of what the worst case scenario. Well, I want to hear your worst your worst case scenario. Here's no, good... you're saying it like. Yeah, go ahead. If you're, if you're like you said, now you have that kid. Now you're a single dad with a kid and a young kid, man. Like you're talking about pursuing those women, you might get a lot of those women you wanted. I'm just saying, like some if if you're a good dad and you're doing and you, and you're like a half decent looking guy, a lot of women are probably like, I'm like, oh my god, like now those women are gonna have kids. It's with like you. the guy with the puppy, but now it's a little kid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> same it, thing. Basically, it does. Same I, thing. It works to I, a point. It does. I hate. I'm I not hate saying it doesn't fact. work for everybody, but I definitely works for people oh man i hate the fact <laughs> I, I i hate the fact that me arguing this point is making it sound like i feel like I'm i just need just to, i want to go general, get like more girls point. right i hate the i don't like the fact that me arguing this is making it sound like me personally wants to go out and get more girls i don't feel that's, like that's I'm not what saying I need you to generally do. either i guess i'm saying like like you said you're talking to other guys right. and like everybody like it might benefit them too. Like they might have a better life when that happens. You never know. You got like a best friend now, right? You got a little baby you can take everywhere. Yeah. That's the for me, Justin, that is such a bad place in life to be. <laughs> Why? Okay. Like that is He's your that's buddy as now, man. He's like your gets, best bro. He ain't no. gonna be a better friend than anybody else. Yeah, for man. You, man. You wanna go to Burger no. King? That kid's no. always down for some no. Burger King. No. <laughs> for me to be a divorced <laughs> single dad. That I feel like is a huge waste of my time <laughs> in life. Okay, I mean, as far as and I'm I don't have time from, to waste from a friendship standard. Uh, I think it makes you seem like a better friend. Like if you had a kid, I come over way more. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like I have a kid. He's like, sitting right there. right now. Like his name is. I would Keys. say your fr- your friend grades like a you know, like a B, maybe a B plus. But you got a kid over here. Like you're like an A. Damn. Your friendship grades an A. How dare you? I'm coming over to see this thing. You base know? my value on the kid that I have. <laughs> Man, maybe I'm just trying to convince you to start a family. I'm pr- I'm probably gonna. So you don't Pretty end up soon. 50 years old and going, oh, I should have had some kids, man. I'm not gonna go to 50 and not have kids. That's how you make cha- the changes you want in the world. That's how you make those changes. Yeah, I you have those you were... kids, 
and you instill what you want on them, and hopefully they change the world to make it a better place from where you left it, right? That is my plan. Okay, I hope I'm <laughs> successful at that. I think a lot of children would be good, but we'll start. I would like to have I think a lot you start with just one. Ten Jacksons. Let's see how that puppy goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want ten Jacksons. <laughs> so the experience that you two have. We learned a lot of stuff. If you could go back, okay, to the first day you met your girl that you divorced later on mm-hmm. in life. If you could go back, would you change getting married? I would change nothing. Okay. I am very happy where I'm at right now today at this point in my life, and changing any of that would change mm-hmm. this. So I would say no. All the bad things I went through, the good things I went through, the struggles after I got divorced with, you know, taking, like, drinking from this fun activity to, like, get away to this not-so-fun activity <laughs> – all of that made me who I am today. Mm. So why would I want to change that? Okay. That's, that's my opinion. Yeah, if you're in a good spot, why would you want to change something that, like, essentially your life could be worse if you that didn't happen, right? Maybe. Like, your life could have gone in a whole worse direction. For me, I know it was, like, a good thing getting married. Like, it, having the kids was, like, good for me. Right. At that time. Oh, definitely for you. <laughs> So I was doing things I definitely wasn't supposed to be doing, you know, like things yeah. you don't want your kids to be doing. Like working at Perkins. <laughs> that too. And like <laughs> other Jeff things, Keys. other things, you know, there's a lot of other things I did and like people I was around, like, I hope my kids aren't like doing, you know, like I don't want my kids to be doing a lot of that stuff. Ma- even working at the breakfast place, you learned to make some good eggs and stuff, didn't you? <laughs> so that's not even a waste of time either. <laughs> Being able to make a breakfast, that's a big deal. Mm. You can find positives. In any situation. I worked at Walmart, and I learned a lot working at Walmart. I don't regret working there. People are always like, oh, you worked at Walmart? How was that? I'm like, I loved it. I love going to Walmart. Nobody likes I learned their first so jobs. much working at Walmart. <laughs> mm. People say all that stuff. So I was like, I was 16. I got a job. Like, where was I supposed to work? Like, but you, you want me to work learned, somewhere? Like, You learned so many things there other than just, like, making a breakfast. Mm. I was just teasing you about that. But you learned how to, like, get along with other people, take orders from people that weren't your parents. You made friends. You, like, you learned so much working in any job when you're a kid. Mm. It's great. Because people are like, oh, you worked at McDonald's? Well, yeah, what was I supposed to do? <laughs> like, most kids got those jobs, right? Like, not everybody, like, got this, like, tremendous job when they got it, like, first started working, you know? Mm-hmm. But the people that did, that had the rich parents or successful parents that threw them into these like intern jobs or whatever the, whatever the hell it is, they missed out on a lot of learning on how to be a person, how to have friendships, how to do all that kind of stuff. Ones that aren't like, you know, school. It's just, it's just different at a job, you know? Mm-hmm. So what's the best way to deal if you, you've both gone through it, what's the best way to deal with a divorce if you do get divorced? I would say sit with your feelings. What's the first of all? And what's don't the, and don't try to medicate through them because it just delays the inevitable. Like you, you eventually have to sit with those feelings. Like I was ashamed that I got divorced. I was embarrassed. What? Why was I embarrassed? I cared about what, what everyone else thought. Can I pose right? a better question? Go for it. What's What's the best way to avoid getting divorced? I mean, what advice well, if you could never you get give? married, then you could never get divorced, right? Okay, so but that's... let's say you're married. What's what's the advice you could give to people in now to avoid getting divorced? Well, you're both going to change. Even if I, you get married right now, you're you're not going to be the same forever. Mm-hmm. You have to you have to change together. You have to be willing to go with them. And if they're going down a bad path, you got to try to steer them down a better one. I'm guessing. People don't. Or you got to join in on their terrible path definitely have to be but. willing to work it together to like make it work right yeah is communication key as a man uh, yes but it's not like you don't always have to say something <laughs> right in a relationship <clears throat> sometimes it's better not to something i struggle with and i've always struggled with this in relationships i don't i don't like I'll listen to a woman and I'll listen to her problems and stuff, but it's very hard for me to share with her the problems that I'm going through. <laughs> you know, so people say communication is key. You need to know everything about your partner. You guys have to communicate. But the ever-present evidence 
you know, the history of, of dating, of the history of people being married and stuff is... You don't want to feel vulnerable to her either, though. Well, once <laughs> once guys start sharing too much with a woman, the thought process is you're, you're oversharing now. You're now seen as weak. <laughs> yeah, you're no longer a benefit to this partner because you have too many issues that you're constantly laying on her chest. And men have, that's the, the whole reason I'm saying this is because men have so many problems. We have a lot of, we do a lot of problem solving. We are constantly stressed out in a lot of, in a lot of situations in life. We're constantly going through things that we will not tell people about. You know, even sometimes your own boys you won't tell about. So if you were to say communication is key in a relationship, if I was to communicate with my girlfriend everything, every little problem I'm having, the fear is that you're going to end up looking like a very insecure. They like to label you, oh, you're insecure. Yep, you're right And about you're that. problematic, right? You got, oh, you're supposed to be the man. You're strong. You're supposed to support me, my feelings and my emotions. You're supposed to be able to handle that. I don't... I'm a woman. I can't. Well, how am I supposed to fix your problems? You're a man, you know. So yeah, how much communication true. is key? What do you share? Right. Like yeah. it's like and then if you really get into that question, it's like I, you find out I can't really share that much with my significant other. Uh, well, right. If there's sh- not much a man can give to he can lay on a woman and she can bear the weight of his problems. So you end up suffering in silence. This is my personal experience. Right? I do know what you're saying, and I, I do agree with you to some extent, I guess. So is that going to end up leading to a divorce? If you as a man take that thought process in, into, a, into a marriage, or should you, it, should you risk it and, and risk looking weak to your woman? Because women will lose respect for you very quickly. If you want to get in the marriage part, that's the, woman you should, that's the person you should be able to talk to, right? That's you would exactly. think so, <laughs> and, and a lot of guys fall That's like fall the in, only person, basically, you probably want to tell. Right? A lot of guys fall into that <laughs> trap, though, don't well, they? You got work, you got to work that stuff out before you get married. You know, you can't get married and then you like, want to like, unload all these like thoughts and feelings that you have inside of you, right? But if you know you can talk to her, then she just like gets mad and doesn't want to deal with it. And like, I don't feel then... like it's good to share with <laughs> women our problems. Are you saying like current problems or like past problems that cause fears? anything? Like, like you, I'm str- like, like you come home from you come home from work and at McDonald's and you're stressed out because you're making the fries today and it don't wasn't tell a, your girl. And it wasn't a good day, right? Yeah, don't tell her. She doesn't care. That's the other part of women. They don't care. You come home and you tell your girl I'm stressed out because someone was rude to me in the drive-through line, like. Like, really, if you think about it from a woman's perspective, like, what the? That makes you look really bad. (laughs) You know, so how many of our problems can we lay out on a woman? I don't, in my personal experience, I feel like none, almost. (laughs) I can't, you can't help me. I'm here for you, right? And that's, again, one of those things. You just listen. You don't give opinions, though. The best thing to do is listen. When a woman tells you she's having problems at work or in anything. Depends on what they She's not telling you because she wants you to tell her what to do. Right. That's the thing you always have to remember. It depends on the situation. Sometimes they want advice and sometimes they don't. They just want to vent to you. Most of the times I don't think they <laughs> want advice. That's the thing about women. It's like you just tell me like, oh, yeah I, I, yeah, I hear what you're saying. And whatever you choose to do to make this different, I will support you in it. Yeah. They do want you to listen. If I say something, I want answers. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the dude's <laughs> like, thing. Fix this for like, yeah. tell me what I need to do here. But hey, women do the same thing. Yeah. They'll bring you their problem. No, like, oh, my car's broken. Fix it for me. Like, what? What, do you, what the hell do you want me to do? Fix your motor, like, <laughs> but I'll do it, right? Because yeah. I'm a man and we're a team. And, but and, can I bring my car to my girlfriend and say, hey, my transmission's all jacked no, up. No, you, you bring it. some flour, like, some yeast, and some water, and some olive oil, and say there's no <laughs> bread in the house. Make me some bread <laughs> while I'm out here fixing your motor. So, <laughs> so hey, what we've learned, you're right. What we've learned from all of this. <laughs> you should be like, what? You want me to cook for you? <laughs> <laughs> we men, we men need each other. That's why this podcast is such an awesome thing. I get to talk to my boys, Right. And I'm not saying I can't talk to my girlfriend. It's just, it's different talking with the boys. I feel like there's a certain strength that men bring to another man's life that women, they don't really have that capacity, you know, in a lot of situations. They can't bring me what I need. Like, if I'm going to lay my problems out to somebody, like, I can see myself doing that to my dad or my brothers. You know, for me to go to even my mom. 
my mom, you know, I could have any conversation with my mom. I feel like I can give her any of the problems I'm having. But a girlfriend, a wife, it's, it's different. The problem is there, too. <laughs> she might just tell you what you want to hear instead of telling you what you need to hear. Mom, you think? Some people, like, if they carry, like... Because they they think they're doing She's you justice by baby trying to be nice to you, you know. But <laughs> ah, she and, might uh, not give you the advice you need, right? It's true. Other good advice too: when you argue with a woman, don't be right. Because if wrong. you no, there's no point even trying to be right. Don't even attempt it. How dare there's you? There's no point. You you can't like <laughs> if you're right, you lost the argument because now you're right and you're a jerk. See, I don't so like you. Like you want to, you want to argue. She's to mad get, that you're right. You want to get your, po- you want to get. <laughs> the point of arguing isn't to get your point across. You know, you don't want to do that. Right. See, I don't like that, Justin. What, what's the point? What do you want? I feel like figure it out. You know, I feel like we're stifling <laughs> our man, our manhood. You know, it's like I don't care if you don't respect me. I was right. But you I bo- gave you the answer. You both have opinions. But you need to respect neither me one when of I'm you's right. right. Neither one of you is right. It's an opinion. You sure? Like what she are we arguing? She has an opinion. You have an opinion. Unless it's like fact based. Oh, like, okay. Like basic math. I see what you're saying. It's all opinions. So what about so political if you, views? If you don't marry someone you don't agree with politically, I can tell, <laughs> I can tell you that from personal experience. That's one thing I will tell you. And people's political uh, views can change. Yeah. With uh, social media exposure and things like that, it, too. It but. can work if you. It can work, though. Like, I know a situation. My aunt and uncle have been married forever, and they're both opposite. But the only. I asked them, well, how does that work? And they don't talk about politics with each other. That's 100%. They will not. Probably smart. They've agreed on it. But like, they won't bring it up to each other. Nothing. But their political views have to dictate their morals, so they can't even have the same morals. If they're that politically different, I don't know. Their it, morals it somehow can't be works because he's like super Republican and she is one hundred percent the opposite way, and they've been married for like thirty years. They both just must work their asses off. They both do and just work, take and they care don't have of themselves, kids. and they don't have a real. That's not a real. Yeah, they, they are in like a domestic partnership where they share things that they buy together, and they both work. They both are successful. I'm assuming mm. they both do their own awesome. thing. <laughs> <laughs> to a point, right? To a point. Like they don't. They don't have to argue about their morals because they don't have children to argue them over. Yeah. Like what's okay to teach wow. them. Mom, that... mom might think it's okay to show them the book with the finger going into the ass, and dad <laughs> might not like that. Well, there is no kid to argue it, so they can, they can get along. They both work a lot. They spend very little time together. They go on vacations, Damn. have a nice house, do their thing. Right. I'm assuming that's how that works. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I just know they're still together. They got a nice just house. crazy. They got a nice house, a couple of dogs say, probably. They have one dog now, but they didn't get even get the dog till like a couple of years ago. The house is nice, but that's only because when they bought it, they didn't have a lot, and they like he actually like worked on the house and like fixed it up to make it look nice. Mm. But but he does live in Minneapolis. I don't think he likes it there. <laughs> it's a cesspool. Freaking yeah. democracy, man. It gets now. Na- I, I used to go there every year from the time I was probably 20, 21 until 36 or 37. I went at least once a year, and every year I watched it get just a little bit shittier. Mm. Sucks, right? Yeah. And eventually I just I haven't been going. COVID hit and just haven't gone back since. It's the beauty of living in a small town. Now California's working this way to ruin the rest of the United States. Yeah, man. They're going straight through Texas right I now. I know. I was like, build, I said build the wall on California. Like, <laughs> let me- let Mexicans in, but build that California wall. Keep them in there. <laughs> this is, that's another podcast that I want us to do. We need to talk about the wall. Yeah. I feel sure. like we have some valuable points that can be made. <laughs> we, I don't know if we can do it in this podcast. We're at a minute four, but. We do need to have that conversation, right? We can have a few. Would more you be willing to come back, Justin, for that? I can come back. Yeah, I have some more questions though. So, what's the most painful emotional thing that you've ever gone through? If you look back, this hurt me the most. Ooh. Hurt my heart. It didn't hurt me physically. It just hurt me. It made me so. I cried. All this. What what was that moment? If you had to think, I would say probably when my wife asked me to get divorced, mm. that was probably it. But 
after the more I thought about it, the fears and like the feelings that I had from it, looking back on it now, as I was older, was worried about what other people thought about it. It wasn't about myself. You know, I was worried about what my family would think, what my friends would think, what my coworkers would think. Mm. I was worried about, you know, I was worried about losing stuff too, the house that I had just bought and was paying for and everything else. But that was probably, that was probably it for me. That was really hard to, even though I knew it was like going to happen, you know, does that make sense? Like I kind of knew it was heading that way, but that, that, that exact moment, it still was like very, very difficult, I guess to deal with at that time looking back at it it's like well she went out down a different path i went down a different path i assume i assume she's happy i'm happy so so that explains to me a little bit why you are able to say you know get married you might get divorced you'll be okay because you've gone through it right yeah I... that was very painful for you and you mm-hmm. went through it yeah i thought it was like it felt like the end of the world like Nothing was ever going to be okay again, you know? Right. I was embarrassed living in my brother's basement for a while. Just embarrassed. Why Why was I embarrassed about it? I don't know. I well, was. it's it's a stigma, right? Like, or whatever. Like, people... Failure. It's failure. Yeah. You it, see it wasn't it. that I was getting divorced. It was that I failed at something that I, like... I'm very, uh... I'm very into, like, giving my best, and I, I hate failing. I don't care what it is. I hate it. You don't want to disappoint yourself. I can't stand losing, <laughs> although I've gotten a little older and like losing True. at sporting things is a little more common. But you, you're your best critic, right? So you disappoint yourself more yeah. or less when something happens and you like couldn't fix it, right? Right. Yeah. No or one make else it go the way you wanted. No could. one else gives a shit. <laughs> I was worried about what everyone else thought, <laughs> and not knowing that no one really cares that I failed at being married. <laughs> you know, if I think about it, when you when I found out you were getting divorced. Yeah, it never even the you, thought that Justin failed at something or anything negative. It didn't even cross my mind. I was just like, "Oh shit!" I was like, I was like "Oh my god!" Nine, I can that was like divorced. nine. That was like nine years ago, maybe even ten years ago. I was in my twenties. It's crazy. I'm almost forty. Damn. I was divorced at twenty nine, so I'm not sure when I can twenty eight, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, ten years ago. So you were ten years younger too. You know. I was a grown man, Justin. Don't I know what and you're And what you think? You're like, man. You're like, man. This guy, <laughs> this guy I'm working with failed at this. Whoa, no. a bum, right? I didn't think that at all. I, the only thing I remember thinking is, God dang it! I, what chance do I have? Justin got divorced. Like, I, Justin's I, I, superhero. I remember having some like, of those conversations. I was like, that's it. I'm never getting married. Skis got divorced. I was like, oh, I got no chance. Like, I've, I've known so many people. The only thought that goes into your head when you hear, oh, somebody else is getting divorced, you're like, ah, well, that seals, that's another nail in my marriage yeah, coffin. Man, like, I should have known better. <laughs> I should have never did that, right? Yeah, some, you're like, I'm not Some people, try too, it. though, some of the people maybe you know, too, also got married probably when, like, some people think it's a way to fix things, too. And it's like, no, like, that's not what you should have done, like. You yeah, know, like getting gonna, married is not going to fix whatever is happening. We're going to get married and start getting along and quit drinking and do all this stuff and just be a happy family, right? Ooh. And then we'll have some kids. It'll all just fix itself. Sounds terrible. I think that's how it works, actually. You first develop problems, and then you get married and have kids, and then the problems go away. <laughs> right. I think that's how it works. <laughs> that's also how it works when you get a credit card. There's no balance on the credit card, and then you rack up, like, thirty thousand dollars on it now all your problems go away exactly and you're stuck you're married to this credit card now you shouldn't have any problems right well if you keep <laughs> doing that maybe eventually someone's just gonna pay your credit cards off for you right <laughs> that goes back to like sitting like, like sitting with your problems though you know if you have something wrong or you're not feeling good about something like i i didn't develop terrible anxiety after i got divorced but i did like i mm. i was never an anxious person and then i had these anxious feelings you know yeah. And instead of dealing with them, I just, uh, you know, put them, put them on the back burner, I guess. Tried to ignore them and did things to make them feel better instead of actually sitting with my feelings and working through what I had gone through and figuring it out, you know. Right. That it wasn't the end of the world. That me failing at that isn't letting anyone down. It's not letting myself down. It wasn't my fault. So once I, once I eventually worked through all those feelings, like 10 years later... I'm feeling a lot better about it, but I chose not to at right. the time, right? 
And you can confidently say that it wasn't your fault. No. Yeah, I, I can say that. You don't think you could have prevented it? I don't think I should have. Re- okay. That's a good way of looking at it. Damn. I think hurts. some of the anxiety, too, is like, just, like, in my thought, is like, you just don't, like, what do I do now, right? Yeah. Like, you don't know where to start and, like, move on from that, maybe. Yeah, you were on a path, yeah. and then someone destroyed your path, and now you have to start a new path, and you have no idea where to start. See, I don't have time <laughs> for that, Justin. That's where my fear comes in. <laughs> You say, Jackson, don't be afraid of getting married and having kids. But you're like, oh, but you might waste a year trying to figure out now i got to restart everything. I, I wasted more than a year. Right. So that's my fear. That's a lot of guys' but fear. But did I actually waste it? You did. I had a good time, <laughs> a good time for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And then it, went south. then it went south real yeah, fast. But that's like, true. Your reset could be good, too, though. It's like a cleanse, right? You like I guess. <laughs> like, a de- like a detox. Mm-hmm. Skis, what was your most painful Oh, I don't know. I guess <laughs> same thing. You think? Yeah. Well, me. Yeah. Uh, the pro. My thought, because I had the kids, is like, well, like, what about them? And like, you know, her too. Like, for me, it was different because, like, I know like what I did, and I made it happen. So I was like disappointed in myself. Yeah. Mm. Then like, where where are they gonna go now? Like, what's how's it gonna affect them? Like I, but like you see that, like I affected like other people in my life. Besides just the person I was married to, mm-hmm. I got to see like Carter like sad and stuff, and like I know like I made that happen. Right. So I fi- I really fucking hated myself. Mm. Yeah. So like I was in a really bad place. Yeah, I didn't have kids, so a different dynamic. I Here's affected just... like somebody I made that I cared for, like I love probably more than anything in the world. Like, and I hate to say, it, but I like you feel more, like even I felt more connected to them than even like my wife. You right, know? because they're like essentially part of you, like you made them, like so. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> That's tough, dude. <laughs> to see them go with like to know how and like my daughter, like it affected my daughter. Carter was a little bit older; he was sad, but like my daughter to see her like, and then like and even going forward, like knowing like and I'm not saying it's her fault, but like my ex wife like being with other people and her like always like having different like boyfriends around or something and like her going back and forth through the homes like you see that aspect and like how it affects them you know it's not good your kids lost the stability in their life that yeah. you and you and your ex-wife offered them mm. and you got to watch them struggle through that yeah no i don't want i didn't want that for them you know because i know i like played a part in that as, that's my fault right damn so drink it yeah like that's why i would drink a lot and like go home from Jack work D. and I'd literally change and go to, and it was bad enough to where I was going to the bar by myself, you know, like I was there by myself. Drinking. I did that a couple of times, but it really wasn't my thing. But. I didn't, I just wanted to, I would go there and like sit there and think about shit, you know? I would, yeah. do, it, I would just do that home by myself. It was like, Oh, a bottle of Jägermeister. Let's, let's play drink the bottle on this one. You know, <laughs> like, oh. I just didn't, I wasn't in a spot. Like I was with, I, I didn't have anywhere to go. Like, I stayed in a hotel for a little bit, and then I went and lived with somebody else for a couple of weeks, and then I went back in the house, which I probably shouldn't have done. But, like, I didn't know where to go or, like, what to do. I didn't have the money to get, like, an apartment. Like, I didn't have, like, family here. Like, I didn't – people offered me to, like, stay with them, but I don't want to, like, inflict what I'm going through onto somebody else either. Like, I'm not that kind of person. Like, I want to be, like, off on my own. Like, I want to deal with it, you know? Yeah. Like try, I, don't I think like... that's a pretty similar path, though, because I did almost the same exact thing. Yeah. Living in my brother's house, then I was back in the house. It's a struggle, right? You're like, you don't, you don't know, you don't feel like you belong anywhere, right? Like mm. you shouldn't be at, you shouldn't be living on someone's couch, but you shouldn't be living with your soon-to-be ex-wife. But you like, that's well, why maybe there's the a, bar, maybe there's though, a chance yeah. we'll get back together and make things work. It's just a nasty roller coaster. Even the guys I was staying with, when they offered me a place to stay, they're like, hey, you want to hang out? And like, I was like, no, nah, man, Like, you guys do your thing. Like, I'd go off and do my own thing. I didn't want to like try Burden to even be it. part of that, you know? Like, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was in my brother's basement, and I didn't want to bother him. I just like sat down there by myself watching Ted. I watched Ted a bunch of times. With uh, the Teddy Bear movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that movie has like a part of my life connected to it. Mm. which is weird because I enjoy the movie, but it's with a very like dark time in my life. Do you think if you were 
when you got divorced, if you were able to just go and pick up another girl really quickly, get a girlfriend that you thought was beautiful, do you think that would have helped you out way more than the mm. path that you had to go through? No. Not having a woman hold you and hug you through this wouldn't have helped you. Don't, you don't think? You don't say. Then you're just you're just doing something else to make you happy at the time. Just like alcohol, it's the same thing. That girl is the Jägermeister, is the anxiety pills. It's something that just make you feel better for right now. It doesn't help you in the long run. God, I feel like if when I I went through a breakup, man, that wrecked me. Right, <laughs> like I was, I put a gun to my head. I'll be honest. <laughs> Like I was so I was so young and so stupid. It was such a pussy thing to do, you know. But I was hammered. I was I was so mm. pissed. I was bawling my eyes out. I had a gun to my head. I found myself on my sofa with a gun to my head one night, just thinking. Okay, and the like the next couple of days, I was looking so hard for any woman who would just talk to me and come sit with me and just be there. <laughs> You know, because just something I, to sidetrack you from what you're it, you yeah. to deal with, though. That's I the needed thing. it so badly. It was right? like drugs or alcohol, though. That's what you were looking for. You were looking for something to make you feel better. But I did find a girl who who came over and talked to me and sat with me and like hung out, and it. I thought it helped. <laughs> for sure, it might have been a rebound and whatever else and all this nonsense. And of course, it didn't work out. Like I didn't end up dating her or anything like that. But she was there for me, and it was. It helped. You talked with her though, and you talked through some things. You didn't just she was somebody you didn't to just, listen to what you had to say. You just didn't like hook up with this girl that you thought looked good to make yourself feel better, right. and then kicked her out of the house. Yeah, and that was one of those right. situations where I don't think it's guys, I don't think <laughs> me sitting around talking with my boys would have helped. It needed to be a woman, you know. That's why I asked that question because for me, like if if I if I'd have been in that situation and skis would have come over and me and him sit on the couch like. I need somebody to hug me, and skis better not touch me, right? Or you. <laughs> so he, it's mo- like, he moisturizes his hands. I know uh, he does. Man, so it's like, man, I get itchy yeah. skin. I got a lotion, man. <laughs> <laughs> My fucking legs get so bad in the wintertime. Man, Wearing nasty, le- like, dude. It's so bad. Scaly. I get home legs. and I'm all like, Ugh, <laughs> after wearing like stuff under your pants, you know. Yeah. It's super dry in the winter. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want you touching my me. white ass skin, right? So I needed a woman there. You needed a woman. It was very important, yeah. And if I'd have sat by myself, like I I don't think a dude would have helped me through that breakup, right? (laughs) So if I'd have sat by myself, I'd have kept doing what I was doing in my living room with a bottle of booze, listening to sad music, listening to sad music, feeling sorry for myself. But having a woman there took my brain off of it. I was able to touch her and hug her and what all this other nonsense, right? Mm -hmm. So. It helped me. You don't think your dad would have like helped you out in that situation if you told him? I felt like I was being a super bitch. So I didn't want to call my dad and tell him, Dad, I'm bawling my eyes out because it, some girl saying, broke up with But me. I think you he know, still would have probably been someone to like help you through it. I think he I, could I, have. I think I know the exact situation you're speaking of. We'll talk about this later <laughs> off camera. Okay. <laughs> dad could have helped questions. me, right? But you yeah. don't want to burden your dad. It feels stupid. If you're a man, whenever you're broken up about a woman, you feel so dumb. Right? Mm-hmm. You're like, I can't fall apart over a woman. This is not possible. <laughs> so you don't want to tell. No, I didn't want to tell my brothers. I didn't want to tell. No, I'm going to deal with this. I'm drinking. It's okay? embarrassing. Yeah. Or some random girl comes mm-hmm. over. I I don't care what she thinks. You know, She'll help me. <laughs> so it was, I don't know. It was a weird situation. I mean, I wouldn't, but, like, I know, like, your situation with your dad's, like, way different than mine. That's why I, like, bring it up. Oh, yeah, man. My dad. <laughs> ah, dad's awesome. I met your dad once. You did? And he was pretty awesome. I was like, this guy, is this guy Jared's dad? And I sent you a picture of him. So I was like, I want to know. <laughs> I sent it to dad, too. He was like, yeah, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, that is me. <laughs> Who's this creep taking my picture? Uh, uh, so, are you going to come back on the podcast, Justin? Sure. Skis, are you coming back? I got more show? things I'd like to <laughs> talk about. I, I so can't we... deal with this shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Skis ain't coming back? <laughs> no, I'll come oh, back. man. You feel like what? I got more stuff to talk about. Yeah, I can We have, back. I feel like we could have 50 of these, right? Yeah. There's lots of life experiences and like things to get into and talk about. Yeah, man. We're just breaking the ice on this one. <laughs> 
Yeah, an hour, <laughs> almost an hour and a half in. Sweet. Ladies and gentlemen. Skis. Cue the music. <laughs> hey, Justin, you could hear it in there. Ladies and gentlemen, the skis has spoken. The music has been cued. Did I say that right? Justin's here. I'm going to catch you guys in the next podcast. Peace. See ya. <laughs> Justin says, deuces. <laughs>